it on the record. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon. I just have a few questions for you. How do you know the items on page two of Petitioner's Exhibit 7 are actually sinkholes and not something else? The items indicated here. Page two of Exhibit 7. opinion that each and every one of those points is definitively a sinkhole based on the simple fact that there's a depression in the ground? I would, you define a sinkhole for me, and I'll tell you. We're the geologists, want you to define it for us. <laughs> define it by, you know, circular depressions that are moving or look active in a karst environment where you know sinkholes do occur, uh, and then looking at the features that I saw out there, you know, where similar looking features that had fallen in uh, and I would say that you'd have to show me one that's not a sinkhole and not, not to say there's not I don't know what would form them but I would you know but if there's not there's, you know some of them aren't they're not but the majority of them are for that reason so is it possible that some of these depressions are not actually sinkholes I haven't seen one when I was out there but it's possible that some of them are how about fracture trace, traces? Can you say with absolute scientific certainty that the lines indicated on your maps are definitively fracture traces? Uh, as similar as anybody else who does fracture traces, you know, their geologist did fracture trace analysis, and he does fracture trace analysis. He does off, off aerials with lineations, and when you're in a karst environment and you're looking at sinkholes and you're connecting them because they do occur along these fracture traces. You, you can see them when you drill, so I know that they exist. So, and, and plus, <coughs> Entrex geologists put a fracture trace down here and down here. You know, the river's controlled by fracture traces. The whole river, all, from White Springs all the way down, it hits a fracture, changes direction, hits another fracture. And that's why you see so much, almost all these right angle turns and really weird stuff going on. Um, and that's most geologic publications say that. And so this fracture trace I have right here, that one right there, is actually an extension of the one that their geologists put right here in the river right there, because they put one right there. So uh, it's sort of a yes or no question here. I mean, can you say with absolute certainty that each of these lines re reflects an actual fracture trace? I can't say 100% certain. Okay. Um, can sinkholes be aligned in a linear fashion without necessarily invoking fracture traces as the cause? Okay. So, I, I don't know how that would happen. I don't. I don't know. I think that sinkholes individually could occur without being on a fracture. It's not a yes or no question. I'm sorry, because no, things happen out there. But, uh, but, and you can't use sinkholes and just line them up because they're two miles apart. I mean, there has to be some relative simple distance between them to you know, make that judgment. So, but in your professional opinion, can there be sinkholes in a relative proximity that are aligned without necessarily invoking fracture traces as their cause? I, I, I suppose that there could be there's something that would happen that would cause that. I don't know what they are. Can you make a d definitive determination based on LIDAR that a given depression is reflective of, fr of a fractured trace? It's a, it's a science that everybody uses, so, and you, 
accepting yourself many times, so I'm using the same science. So I don't, I'm not sure if you're saying that it can't be done, and therefore all. All I'm asking is a question, and it's whether you can make a definitive de determination based on LIDAR that a given depression is reflective of a fracture trace. I think that you can. Okay. And are there other geological causes for linear type depressions, like the ones that you were superimposed um, as your fracture traces? There's very few straight line linear natural, you know, surface geomorphology features that you know, occur all by themselves. So I, I would say it's not a natural, it's not something natural on the surf, uh, surface of the earth to have straight lines. Not that they can't occur, I don't know where they are, but uh, you've got a line, something made in a line. Could it, could, uh, linear features like this be caused by flowing water from uh, historical time? If it wasn't for the sinkhole depressions out there, I would say yeah. I would say that when you're looking at that, nobody's ever seen this before. When the LIDAR came out, all of a sudden there's actually geomorphology in Florida. And, and you're looking at it. It's because it's always been hidden by the tree, which is why one reason I showed the tree cover. You can't see that. And if it wasn't for the depressions out there, and I was just out there as a non-geologist, you know, I would say, yeah, look at that. Wow, Oxbow Lakes, you know, meanders, and whatever other features are out there, because they, they, they all represented on that large scale map. Yeah, but I just want to bring you back around to the to the original question, question which is whether <laughs> Flowing water might cause linear type depressions. Well, uh, yes, flowing water could cause linear type depressions. Or lineal type sloughs. So try to get rid of that word depression okay. as a river causing something like that. <clears throat> Do you know if your delineated fractures are connected in the subsurface? That's purpose of, yeah, you know, I mean, the limestone is what fractured, so they would, they would have to be lining up on some sort of fracture zone in the limestone. How do you know that? I've drilled them. Lost fluids, lost circulation, drilled over here, moved over there, seen shifts. I've read a lot of you know, all the geology, geological publications. I've written two articles on sinkhole and Florida with the St. Paul Institute back in the 80s. You know, the, was part of all that group was Rodney DeHaan back then, you know, doing uh, St. Paul analysis all over Florida. You know, two, at least two big symposiums on it, and, you know, and I used some of these areas for my my talk. So I feel like I have a good grasp of what I'm saying. I'm not trying to... And I'm just trying to more fully understand uh, the source of uh, your conclusions. Um, so I appreciate that. and. So, did you drill these particular fr fracture traces that you uh, identified? So, do you know with certainty that they're interconnected in the subsurface? I, I don't know for certainty, obviously. And forgive me if you answered this previously and I missed it, but what is the difference between sinkhole features and identified sinkholes on page two? Identified ones are ones that I actually took a GPS on. There were just too many of them to actually put them all over the map because, you know, well, one reason the LIDAR shows them up pretty good. And that was kind of the purpose, you know, if my blue, if my green sinkholes had not aligned up with the blue area, I would have gone back out to try to figure out why. You know, it also gave me a reason why I believe the GPS, the lap longs that I got from the GPS. But on, the, on that page, too, on the map, you've got some sinkhole features, and then you've got green dots that indic indicate, according to your key, located sinkholes. So what's, I, uh, when did you say sinkhole feature, and when did you say I will look? apologize for the map. I, you know, I make better maps with better explanations, but I was simply identifying something that is a sinkhole feature without me having gone over there and putting a GPS coordinate on it. And I simply did not go out and GPS every sinkhole that I saw out there. And similarly, did you ground truth every sinkhole that's indicated on your maps? Did you 
you off there right. and no, no, I, I, physically? Just, just basically, you know, within 100 feet of either side of that, 100, 200 feet of either side of that uh, white line on the map. You mentioned drilling for the city of Lee. Did you tell the city that you couldn't drill because of the karst geology? <clears throat> no, and, and actually I was a geologist, you know, I had to contract, I had a better rig than mine to go out there and drill but I was in charge. So no, you know, obviously vertical wells are not that easy, but, uh, but they're done all the time. You know? And in those particular wells, after the engineer kind of engineered the casing depth on them, and I did a test hole, you know, all I was encountering was cavities full of sand, and I recommended they put 50 more feet of casing on. And even after all that, you know, what you don't see, what you don't see on that map is the district, the water management district has permitted literally hundreds of irrigation wells in these areas. I mean, there's 60 of them within a six and a half mile radius of gold pit sale or Pilgrim's Pride. And they artificially lowered that, you know, that water table during drought and those wells failed and they had to redo them. Because they were, sand kept rattling down, rattling down, and got, got below the casing, so far down, uh, so they had to redo those wells. Did the limestone mines that you worked for operate in karst areas? Yes. What assumptions did you make in generating the maps? This map? Uh, all of the maps in the Exhibit 7. Well, I made the assumption that on my LIDAR maps that the LIDAR is pretty accurate <clears throat> for elevation purposes, and I did double check. I actually checked on the elevations that y'all had on your stakes versus, you know, what the LIDAR was saying. It was very, very, very close. So I, you know, I, I depended upon, you know, all the data that I, that I did get from DDP and water management districts from my you know, different coverages of you know, all the ones that did all that. Um, what other assumptions did I make about my maps? You know, I assumed I was right in delineating the fracture traces. And you also made assumptions about the sinkholes, right? Because you didn't. But some of them aren't assumptions. Some of them, obviously, are. Yeah. Have you taken a course in GIS? Uh, no, I'm not an expert at it. I, I can make my maps. I can't do 3D. I can't do, you know, a lot of more complicated stuff with it. But I am an expert on the stuff that I. Do do. Did you take a course in the I analysis? did take a course on it anyway. To answer your question, yes, but it was very... What was the nature of the course? It was a GIS course, a uh, RPU, okay. RPUs. Is it extensive? No, it's not extensive. Have you taken a course in the analysis of shape files? No. Have you taken a course in geospatial data? No. What, project what, what do you mean by geospatial data? Because I've done a lot of geospatial data doing ore body analysis where, you know, I could do, draw the ore body and move it around and or have hire people to do that for me. Uh, so that's geospatial. You know, where in space does an ore body lie and, you know, where you can look at all your wells and connect. Uh, I mean, I have, I hire people to do more technical stuff for me when I need it. Did the people that you've hired assist you in making those maps? I didn't make any, nobody, I didn't hire anybody to make these maps. Okay. What projections did you use to generate the maps? Uh, when you talk about projection, are you talking about like uh, lat long or, or, or what? I mean, I'm talking about the projections that you would use to uh, create an overlay on the plane to um, accommodate for curvature. I don't think that that is on a small scale like that. That would even would even be necessary. So you didn't make any projections. It's not necessary. It's too small scale. I mean, the Earth doesn't curve that much on you know. But you couldn't do that. Does the word uplift in the geological context indicate elevation change due to tectonic activity? The elevation, yes, from, from the normal horizontal bedding of a, of a, of a uh, 
body of soil or something or limestone because it's all laid down horizontally. It's right here, so an uplift would raise it and change its uh, change its elevation relative to where it was laid down at. Yeah. And that's due to tectonic activity as commonly used in the field yeah, plate geology. tectonics, or yeah, for the most part. Or maybe not necessarily that. You know, the Gulf of Mexico, with all the sediment accumulating in it, actually creates forces that push up some of these. You know, that, and that could be the cause of the El Cabo uplift and peninsula arch. You know, the accumulation of sediments actually same with when ice melts off of Greenland. You know, the land rises because of weight storms. Now we got weight coming in and move in other directions. So maybe not plate tectonics, but certainly something causes it with the logic. It could be just simply the sediments accumulating in a trough. Well, you made several references to the Ocala uplift. Is that uh, phrase still in general use and accepted by the community? We still see it on maps. And there's a, a geology map. I mean, it's geology of Florida put out by Three of our geology tools for oil that still use it. So you'd have to tell me that it's not to, for me to know that it's not. Is there any evidence to support tectonic uplift in this location or is that an inference? I I, I don't know of any. I don't have anything further. Thank you for your time this afternoon. Thank you. Um, about pipes that you had drilled before. How wide were those pipes? How with the diameter? Yeah. I don't know. Not, not certainly not as big as they're doing. Like, uh, eight inch, twelve inch, probably the biggest. Okay. Thank you. And how deep potentially could one of those fractures go? You said you weren't one hundred percent sure how deep those, the ones that you marked on the map, go. But how deep could they go? I think fractures themselves, because they occurred during. The uplift, you know, could extend for miles underground. You know, they're, they're a fracture of the rock itself from the uplift. Um, but the widening of them has only occurred in, you know, in my opinion, in the top 300 feet of the limestone, where, you know, where the sea level was lower and, and that was exposed to the tannic water, to oxygen. Thank you. That's all. Your Honor, just a quick read cross based on. <laughs> what are we going to do? So? I had a, a, a couple questions for witness. Okay. In addition right. to this one, okay. one counsel. Okay. We confer. Okay. What, uh, what do you have? Uh, just, just a few quick questions, Your Honor. You, you said just a minute ago that uh, the fractures may extend miles, and that, in your opinion, that they could be. Uh, 300 feet, but once again, you haven't actually done any geotechnical or geophysical borings at this location, correct? Not at least, no. So these traces that you indicate at this area are simply your observation of the surface, not an indication of actual data you looked at for the uh, information below? No, neither have y'all. So, and we're even on that story, I've checked all your work trying to find out. <laughs> with a map from the Suwannee district showing the LIDAR, but what I can't tell, there's been no testimony as to the cave system markings on there or their particular relevance. So, I mean, be admitted for the limited purposes of being shown LIDAR data for the area, I'm fine with. All right, it's admitted only for the LIDAR data on elevations. Call it. Yeah. Petitioners' 
exhibit nine. Make sure that that's up there. And then finally, I'd like to move in a report that you asked, that the table trial asked about. Um, it is exhibit B as in Victor, M as in M, M to N. And it is page 30 through 30. The page numbers in the top, well, top right, and they move to the top left. 30, 31, and 32. And I believe that questions were asked of Mr. Price or inside of this document, this publication made by Mr. Price. I apologize, I'm sorry, I have no idea what you're referring to. Okay. What questions I asked, I never asked him about any reports that he's done. Oh, I apologize. DEP asked questions. On pages 30, 31, and 32? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Your Honor, he referenced having written uh, an article about this, but I didn't ask him any questions about the article. Okay, I would, if possible, I would like to move this article into evidence. <coughs> uh, well, he, he, he answered for me, not specifically. He used it as one of the articles. I didn't specifically use that. I don't want to tell you. <laughs> but I don't want to do anything that's not correct. Either. Mentioning an article has nothing to do with this admissibility. Uh, or not much to do with this admissibility. So now he's saying he didn't mention it. So what is it? Do you know what it is? You, what, is what is this article? Would you like I, to see it? I did a field trip, Southeastern Geologic Society back in the 80s in this area, down that particular area up in the Lapaha Basin, and my, my part in it was talking to these geologists was a little talk on sinkholes. Mainly that was sinkholes occurring in the phosphate deposit. Yeah, Your Honor, I'm going to maintain my objection to this. We haven't discussed it. There's been no investigation as to its veracity. Yeah. So nor did he rely it's, on it. There's many problems with it. It might be undirect. It's not, it doesn't look like it's. Okay. Good job. Uh, Mr. Price, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I didn't, I wasn't sure for your testimony where you were saying, uh, the point of your testimony was that uh, the crossing at this particular location is, that's a bad site for a crossing. Or you were, maybe suggesting something broader that uh, the Suwannee River isn't a good river to cross, that, you know, this is, this is how, you know, most of the uh, Suwannee River basin is like this, that it has, it's got all these features, and so we shouldn't cross the Suwannee with a pipeline. That's basically, it was two-pronged, yes, and that's exactly right. One, this bad area, but that area, it's all the same. Up Is there a good area? area? In other words, so you don't think there's a good area? I think there's a good area um, that I'm aware of. Not to say that there's not. Do you want to? There are that more stable areas, you know, but not down there. Do you have a question you want to ask? That follows Did up on mine. Mr. Ms. Boone? No. no. <laughs> Yeah, do you have a question? Your Honor, yeah, just a quick follow-up. So your opinion that this isn't a good location, that's based on the site investigation that you did that's generally depicted in that for in those four figures, which has been the basis of your testimony today? No, it's based upon my 40 years of working in this environment up and down the river and up in these counties and um, cumulative knowledge of the area, you know, it's problem area. Thank you. No further questions, Ron. Thank you, Mr. Price, for stepping down.